Good evening and welcome. I'd like to call to order the City of Douglasville City Council regular meeting for tonight, which is Monday, May 1st. First of all, we'll have our invocation that will be done by Pastor Jeff Overton from Beulah Baptist Church. And after that, we'll have the uh, Pledge of Allegiance that will be led by the Mayor Pro Tem, Councilman Larry Yaki. Please stand for the invocation. Let us pray. Lord of Heavenly Fathers, we bow before you now. We're mindful of one who's normally at these proceedings, Lord, our city clerk, and we ask God for you to be with her and her family and the tragic loss of her brother. Ask God for your compassion and, Lord, your, your peace to be upon them at this time. And Lord, as we gather here, we're so thankful to live in a community that cares for one another, loves one another, and has that compassion for one another. May we always seek to be that type of community. We pray tonight, Lord, for our leaders that you have put in position. Lord, it's our duty according to your word to pray for them, lift them up continuously. God, we do that here tonight. Ask that you grant them wisdom. Ask you grant them courage. Ask that you use them in a powerful way, Lord, that everything that we do in our town may be pleasing to you. And Lord, draw us ever closer to thee. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. For your name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Mayor Pro Tem, for leading us in the pledge, and thank you again, Pastor Overton, for coming this evening and for lifting up in prayer our city clerk and her family. We will move on to announcements and presentations, and I do have two proclamations tonight. One is um, a proclamation to represent Lupus Matters Corporation proclaiming that May 1st, 2017 as Lupus Awareness Month in the city of Douglasville. And the second one will be declaring May 7th uh, through May 13th as Municipal City Clerks Week in the um, city of Douglasville. So the first one, I don't know if we have any representatives here, but I'll read the Lupus one and then we will present it. It says, whereas each year, the Lupus Matters Corporation designates May as National Lupus Awareness Month to show support for the estimated 1.5 million Americans who have lupus, and lupus is an unpredictable and misunderstood autoimmune disease that ravages different parts of the body, it is a diff difficult to diagnose, hard to live with, and a challenge to treat. And lupus can affect any part of the body, including the skin, lungs, heart, kidneys, and brain. No organ is spared. The disease can cause seizures, strokes, heart attacks, miscarriage, and organ failure. And whereas lupus can be particularly difficult to diagnose because the symptoms are similar to those of many other illnesses, and major gaps exist in understanding the causes and consequences of lupus. More than half of all people with lupus take four or five more years and visit three, to more, three or more doctors before obtaining a correct diagnosis. And whereas lupus strikes mostly women of childbearing age, no one is safe from lupus. African Americans, Hispanics, Latinos, Asians, and Native Americans are two to three times more likely to develop lupus, a disparity that remains unexplained. And whereas 55,000 citizens diagnosed in Georgia are affected by lupus. Now therefore, I, Rochelle Robinson, Mayor of the City of Douglasville, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2017 as Lupus Awareness Month in the City of Douglasville and encourage citizens to observe this month by educating themselves on the symptoms and impact of lupus and to join with the Lupus Matters Corporation in supporting programs of research, education, and community service. So proclaim this first day of May. Thank you. Is there anyone here to... Thank you so much. Please come forward and we'll take a picture. And thank you for you. If you would like to say anything, you're welcome to say it at this time. You give your name and address for the record. Yes, ma'am, at the podium. And then we'll have you. Hello, uh, my name is Monica Ellis and I'm with the Lupus Matters Corporation. And what we do is, uh, I have lupus and I've had it for 16 years and it has taken out my hair and my nails, so my main focus is the discoid part of lupus, which um, I would like to fund wigs for people and do, you know, makeup drives and stuff like that. So, um, I don't know, lupus is devastating. I've been on my um, deathbed for three times and I'm still here to give awareness to lupus. And May is Lupus Awareness Month, 
May 10th is also Lupus Awareness Day. So please, please, if you know anyone with lupus, just be aware and try to support them. Thank you so much for being thank an advocate. You. We're going to give you a hand for being a yes. survivor and a oh, champion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We wouldn't be able to tell if you didn't tell us that you I know. Didn't. I know. I was, well, if I snatched his wig gonna, off. I was going to say that. You don't look like you were <laughs> sick at all. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I really do. We'll come across him. Okay. We're coming out there. Okay. <laughs> We'll move on to the next proclamation, which is for Municipal Clerks Week in the city of Douglasville. Douglasville, Georgia proclamation for Municipal Clerks Week, May 7th through the 13th, whereas, excuse me, the Office of Municipal Clerk, a time-honored and vital part of local government exists throughout the world and the Office of Municipal Clerk is the oldest among public servants, and whereas the Office of Municipal Clerk provides a professional link between the citizens, the local governing bodies, and agencies of government at other levels, and municipal clerks have pledged to be ever mindful of their neutrality and impartiality, rendering equal service to all. Whereas Municipal Clerk serves as the information center on functions of local government and community whereas municipal clerks continually strive to improve the administration of the affairs of the Office of Municipal Clerk through participation in education programs, seminars, workshops, and the annual meetings of their state, providential, county, and international professional organizations, whereas it is most appropriate that we recognize the accomplishments of the Office of Municipal Clerk. Now, therefore, I, Rochelle Robinson, Mayor of the City of Douglasville, Georgia, do recognize the week of May 7th through May 13th as Municipal Clerks Week and further extend appreciation to our Municipal Clerk, Ms. Vicki Ackert, and Deputy Clerk, Ms. Sharon Keith, and to all Municipal Clerks for their vital services they perform and their exemplary dedication to the communities they represent. So they're proclaimed this first day of May 2017. I want to thank Ms. Vicki and continue to pray for she and her family and thank Ms. our Deputy Clerk, Ms. Sharon Keith, as well. Please come forward. Ms. Sharon will give you a hand as you come forward. Do you have anything to say or you just want to? You don't have anything to say. You're shy. Okay, we're going to have a picture done. Sir. 
Before we go on with the meeting, I will go through protocol so that we'll not have any misunderstandings and everyone knows how the meeting will be run tonight. I'd like to welcome you again to Douglasville City Council's regular City Council meeting. Tonight, the Council will vote on the agenda items discussed at the last legislative work session. Items that will be voted on tonight have been discussed previously. And therefore, unless you have new information to present, you do not need to reintroduce the same material you presented at the work session. If the business you're here to discuss is not listed as an agenda item, there will be ample time to discuss your business under the agenda item, comments from citizens and delegates. Before we start, I'd like to cover just a few more procedural things. I'd ask that you keep your comments and your presentations on a professional level dealing with the facts that are important for the council members to make their decisions. We will not accept comments that are considered personal attacks on any individual or group. Only one person speaking at a time, please. And I'd ask that you not applaud, cheer, or make loud, disturbing comments, otherwise distracting to the meeting. If you have a cell phone or any electronic device, iPads or notepads or any of that, please put those in silent mode or turn those off so they will not be disruptive during the meeting. The committee chairperson will read the agenda item, make his or her, her motion before the vote. If the applicant has additional information, he or she may present it. Then if there are comments, or citizen comments on points of interest that were not made at the work session, the council will accept comments at that time. We ask that the comments um, on the sheets that you would fill out, if you'd like to make any comments, that there is a green form that you should have filled out on the table. You fill that out, please, and give your name and address for the record when you come to the podium and hand that form to Ms. Sharon Keith, our deputy city clerk. Um, we ask the council, um, as you adopted a new policy, the respect of time, there'll be 30 minutes in the, for the item and 30 minutes against, depending on uh, where you stand. Each person, including the applicants, only has one opportunity to comment or make a statement on each of the agenda items. Um, I think that's it. And I emphasize tonight that we only accept brief comments for clarifying statements if you have not had an opportunity to do that. Now, if you do not want to talk about any of the agenda items, again, there will be uh, a portion at the end of the meeting for comments from citizens and delegates, and you can come at a, up at that time and give your name and address for the record, and we'd love to hear from you. So now we'll move on into the meat of our meetings. I open the floor for minutes to approve the legislative work session of April 13th, 2017, and the regular meeting of April 17th, 2017. Yes, I make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Second. Thank you, it's been properly moved and second to approve the minutes from the legislative work session of April 13th, 2017, and regular meeting of April 17th, 2017. Are there any questions or comments from council members as it relates to the minutes? Any corrections? Thank you, not seeing any. All of those in favor of approving the uh, minutes, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Unanimously approve the minutes are approved from the meetings of April 13th and 17th. Now I'll open the floor to uh, receive a motion for the consent agenda. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Thank you. It's been properly moved and second to approve the consent agenda as presented. Are there any questions or comments from city council members for the consent agenda? Thank you so much. Not seeing any. All of those in favor of approving the consent agenda as presented, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Thank you. The ayes have it for approving the consent agenda. We'll move on to item seven, which is public safety committee. That's chaired by council member Samuel Davis. No, I'm Madam Mayor. Thank you so Thank much, you. Councilman Davis. Welcome back. We'll move to community, you're welcome. Community and Economic Development Committee, that's chaired by Council Member Mark Adams. No business tonight, Madam Mayor, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. We'll move on to Planning and Development Committee, that's also chaired by Council Member Mark Adams. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have one item tonight under Planning and Development. That's item 22-17-17, approve a variance request to reduce the 50-foot required minimum setback for regulated activities from the bank of a regulated stream in zoning code subsection 3.22.04C 1E for a variance of 25 feet on the northeastern side of the property for a remaining required buffer of 25 feet to
to allow construction of impervious surface not closer than 25 feet to Anawake Creek to eliminate the 25 foot additional stream buffer requirement in zoning code subsection 3.85.02 for a variance of 25 feet, leaving no buffer area required by this subsection to allow impervious cover at the same location and to reduce the additional 25, I'm sorry, the additional 50 foot undisturbed natural vegetative stream buffer requirement of zoning code subsection 3.05 3.85.01 for a variance 25 feet for a remaining buffer requirement of 25 feet to allow development activity at the same location at parcel 0163025012 on 40.28 acres land lot 163 district 2 section 5 parcel 12 application made by SL Bright Star LLC I know that we've had discussion. We have spoken with both uh, Mr. Joe Fowler and Mr. Howard Ray uh, representing this application on Thursday. Uh, are there any questions or comments additionally of the council for either of these individuals? I, I see that both are here present with us tonight. I do have one question. I think I would probably ask this of Mr. Howard Ray. Mr. Ray, if you would mind coming forward, I just want to clarify one thing. First of all, is there not any way that we could have simplified the wording of all of these requirements? <laughs> At, I'm, I'm only, identify yourself, Mr. Ray, if you will. Yeah. Howard Ray, HRC 6554 East Church Street, Douglasville. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ray. Uh, understanding that you obviously have some challenges, as you have stated in the request for the variance, would you, in layman's terms, basically tell us for our listening and viewing audience what we are, what your need is, or why there is a need for it, as to the topographical issues that obviously uh, are in place here for you to come and request the variance. Would you do that for us, please? Yes, sir. Um, I'll try to make it as non-technical as possible. Thank you. Um, the code requires a 50-foot setback from a stream, uh, from a no, from no disturbance. So the state's code is 25. So we're requesting that the stream buffer disturbance limits be reduced from 50 each side to 25 each side. In addition, the, code, or the city code requires an impervious setback. It also includes a septic setback, but we're, we're not on septic, we're on sewer. So we're asking for that to go away. The primary reason is due to the cross dock length needed by the um, tenant, I don't know who they are. I'm trying to think what to call them. Uh, there's a certain distance from where the trucks unload to where the trucks load that is a minimum distance. That's where we're at. Um, to achieve the site, um, there is about, I want to say about 60 foot of elevation from one side to the other. Okay, so now we are doing a cut wall on one side of 20 feet and we're doing a fill wall of 20 feet on this side to flatten it. So we have minimized as much as possible. Um, what the buffer does, it gives us room to um, put the footer for the wall. In other words, if you look at my drawing, you'll see a line. Well, that's the top of the wall. And you see it's off of the buffer a little ways. Well, what you don't see is underground, there will be a, a footing for the wall that will hold the wall up to keep it from, from flipping. So that's, where I, that's, that's the main reason is to be able to get that footing in for that wall. And basically that would not be seen once the wall is installed and backfilled, you'll not see that footing again, but you have, you, you need the variance in order to put the footing in a proper size footing to accommodate the wall. Correct. You, okay. you have the, you have the footing, you have the um, angle to dig down to create the footing because there's certain safety procedures you have to, plus you have a double row of silt fence, which ends up taking about six feet. So the footing will probably be 10 to 12 feet off of that buffer but I got to, to put all my regulated requirements that, that that's why I need it. That get into the buffer. Yeah. Okay. I'll be, right. We're, we're outside of it, right. but okay. Any question that I might've caused by, uh, Mr. Ray's comments on the issue. Okay. In the light of the concern and, and of the need to enter that buffer for topographical issues and, uh, a variance needed for the purpose of the footing, I'm going to make a motion that item 2217-17 be approved. Second. Did you get it, Deputy Clerk? 
Mayor Pro Tem and Councilman Watts. I'm not certain who said it first. <laughs> Take your pick, Ms. Keaton. <laughs> Okay, it's been properly moved and second to approve item 22-17-17. Are there any additional questions or comments as relates to this item from the council members? Thank you, not seeing any. All of those in favor of approving item 22-17-17, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say nay. Thank you, item 22-17-17 is adopted. Thank you, Madam council. Mayor, and thank you, uh, Mr. Ray, appreciate your input there. That's all that we have under that committee, Madam Mayor. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. We'll move on to Parks and Recreation Committee. That's chaired by Council Member Chris Watts. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have one item tonight under Parks and Recreation. We have item 23-17-11. Authorize the City Parks and Recreation Department to advertise for bids for the construction of the Bermuda Green Conversion Project. Uh, this has been discussed in committee and in legislative session. Um, I'd like to put this in the form of a motion to approve item 23-17-11. Second. Thank you. It's been properly moved and second to approve item 23-17-11. Are there any additional comments or questions as relates to this item about Bermuda green conversion for the golf course? I would just like to say again, this is out of splost to me. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Okay, all of those in favor of approving this item, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, say nay. Thank you. Item 23-17-11 is adopted. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, that was our only item tonight under Parks and Rec. Thanks so much, Coach. We'll move on to Finance Committee. That's chaired by Mayor Pro Tem Larry Yaki. Yes, I have one item, item number 24-17-12, adopt an ordinance to amend the City of Douglasville's physical year 2016-2017 sanitation enterprise fund budget. And before I say anything, Mr. Roberts, would you like, since you were not here last, uh, Thursday, would you like to make some comments? Uh, Greg Roberts, uh, Maintenance and Sanitation Department, 8578 Club Drive, Douglasville or email address sanitation at douglasvillega.gov. Um, th this is for a, a knuckle boom truck um, that um, you've all seen in your neighborhoods. A knuckle boom is the got the big arm on it. Some people call it the claw, but it comes down and picks up yard waste. And um, uh, sorry we didn't have some of the items uh, loaded up for Thursday night. I thought they were there, and uh, so I, I apologize for that. Um, but uh, there are two quotes here that you see. One is for uh, $150,423.21. $150, the other um, is for $180,567.14. Are there any particular questions about the vehicles? Mr. Yaki, I did have a question, uh, Mr. Roberts. Basically, then it's just the, the two makes. It's the same make of uh, knuckle boom and bed just difference in the cabin chassis that's causing the difference in price is that correct well sort of uh, the one that's from uh, epg environmental um, products of georgia um, this was built as a spec truck and so uh, it's it's available for purchase now and um, the chassis does make a difference um, but it's a spec truck uh, you that's a very favorable price the 150 is um, they've had the truck for a few weeks and um, he's held on to it for us long enough to try and get it to the budget process uh, probably if I'd ordered this truck as it is I'm, I'm not sure that the price would be the exact same but they've used it around for various places uh, it, he's probably had the truck since uh, December I notice this, this is a 17 model Freightliner versus an 18 that was bid uh, cabin chassis by Carolina. So that, that would have something to do with the difference in price also. But it is still a current year and it's a new vehicle with the same warranty, yes, correct? Yes, it's a brand new truck. Uh, it would have been bought in the, I'm sure he would have purchased that chassis in the um, calendar year 2016, end of the year. Because I know he's had the truck since about December. Um, if I went with the other truck from CES, um, we would be several months getting it, which several, waiting several months is not an issue with me. Uh, I just felt like the, the purchase price from EPG was a good price. One of the key components um, 
to some of the purchases that I've learned um, in working in the department uh, over the years. When you, when you purchase from a company that's outside of our area, or if the equipment comes from several states away, it can make a difference. Uh, for example, we've bought garbage trucks that I've mentioned to you. Um, the Heil body on a garbage truck, uh, those are assembled in Fort Payne, Alabama. And what we got into on some of the garbage trucks is having to wait on cylinders, getting quick response when a truck is down, a truck is down. And so um, there are times when on the front load trucks, for example, with some of the, another make that we have, if a cylinder goes bad, we may be, we may be two weeks out on getting that cylinder, whereas we're two days out on getting the cylinder from the other company. And so it can be very similar. These two companies have set up shop um, in the area near uh, Fulton Industrial, They're, you know, the industrial area across from Six Flags. And um, we've gotten good response from these, uh, these two companies. They're quick to get us parts, equipment. Uh, the chassis are served, you know, getting the chassis served is an important aspect of what we do in the department. And uh, so that's a, a key component um, of this type of a proposal. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, Mr. Roberts. Thank you. Any other questions from, from the council for Mr. Robert? Okay. Then I have I'm a question for you, Mr. Chairman. We're just voting to amend the budget, correct? Not to actually authorize the purchase of the truck? That is correct. Get some clarification on that? That's correct. So with that, the is, difference. that is correct. That is correct. Yes, sir. Well, does the, does the budget not authorize the purchase? Or, or we just need to come back in a couple of weeks? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Be okay with that? Okay. All right. Then I make a motion that we approve item 24-17-12. Second. Thank you. It's been properly um, approved um, or properly vetted. First and second to approve item 24-17-12. Are there any additional questions or comments as it relates to this item? Yes. Yes, sir. I, I think clear. Mr. Adams is confused too by the look on his face. So does, <laughs> just a little clarification, this will come back to us again to vote on the purchase? Or was that sanitation funds don't require us to authorize? I didn't quite hear, that wasn't clear. Sanitation is different and that capital purchases must be authorized by the council. So it will come back to us to vote on the purchase. Right. All right, that's clear now, thank you. You're welcome. So it's been properly moved and second to approve item 24-17-12 with just the item to um, amend the budget, but sanitation will come back to present the truck to be voted on at another meeting. Okay. That's correct. Yes, sir. Any other questions or comments as relates to this item? All of those in favor of approving item 24-17-12, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Thank you, it's been properly, um, uh, unanimously approved to adopt item 24-17-12. And that's all we have tonight, Madam Mayor. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. We'll move on to Information and Technology Committee. That's chaired by Council Member Richard Siegel. No items tonight, Madam Mayor, thank you. You're welcome, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Maintenance and Sanitation Committee, uh, the Vice Chair is Councilmember Mark Adams. No business. no business tonight, Madam Mayor, thank you. You're welcome, thank you, sir. Transportation Committee, that's chaired by Councilmember LaShawn Burdanley. No items tonight, Madam Mayor, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Danley. Personal Organization Committee, that's chaired by Councilmember Richard Siegel. No items tonight, Madam Mayor, thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Ordinance and Intergovernmental Committee, the Vice Chair is Dr. LaShawn Burdanley. No items tonight, Madam Mayor, thank you. Thank you. Education and Training Committee, that's chaired by Council Member Samuel Davis. No items tonight, Madam Mayor, thank you. You're welcome, thank you, sir. Is there any other business to come before council tonight, the legislative work session? From council members, I will say that the ultimate block party was great. Um, that was held last Friday. I think it was Friday, the week has gone by so quickly from the city. Uh, the movie Sing, and it was well attended from Main Street 
was a very good program. I saw Councilman Adams and his beautiful wife there. My family enjoyed uh, the food trucks, so we look forward to food truck Mondays coming in the city. Um, and then we have a town hall meeting that will be held on May the 9th for the North Side Council members. And I apologize for pretty, uh, putting you on the spot, Council Member Burdanley, but if you could explain, please, we're going to have a collaboration with the county. And Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Yes, this is a collaboration town hall meeting with Councilman Davis and myself in Ward 3, and it's collaborating with Commissioner Henry Mitchell, the third as well as Devitrian Caldwell, who is our school board rep in District 1. And it will be May the 9th from 7 until 8 p.m. And also Commissioner Mitchell, Councilman Davis, and myself will be meeting with the residents of Douglas Village Apartments from 6 until 7. And all of the town hall meetings will be held at the Alice Hartthorne Center in Jesse Davis Park. Thank you. Thank you so much. I will be there in attendance as well. Look forward to it. You're welcome. Um, City Attorney, Mr. Joel Dotson. No business, Madam Mayor. Thank you so much. Chief Assistant City Attorney, Ms. Susan Littlefield. No business, Madam Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Our Chief of Police, or Deputy Chief, Sue Ann Shaw. No business, Madam Mayor. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Our City Manager, Ms. Marcia Hampton. Yes, ma'am. No business tonight. What? Okay. Comments from citizens and delegates. We do have a citizen couple. I don't know if you all would have something to say, but... The podium, the floor is open. If you'd like to give comments to the mayor and council, we would love to hear from you. You can give your name and address for the record and approach the podium. Nothing? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, there is a staff report concerning Human Resource Department upcoming event, which is an employee health fair that will be held on uh, May the 23rd. And that committee is our personnel chair, personal organization committee that's chaired by Councilman Richard Siegel. Ms. Tia Austin. Yes, ma'am. Tia Austin, 6695 Church Street, Douglasville, Georgia. Um, good evening, Madam Mayor and Council. We want to, um, the HR Department wants to invite you out and all of our employees out to our annual health fair this year, May 23rd, um, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Conference Center. This year it will be um, a little longer than last year to um, accommodate everyone, um, everyone's schedule. Um, also, we will have additional staff on hand from our healthcare provider um, to assist us with the biometric screenings. And right now that is open to everyone to sign up for electronically. So if you plan to attend the health fair this year, you will have to uh, sign up electronically or see us in HR um, and we can sign, um, sign you up um, as well. Um, this, theme, this year's theme will be Casino Royale, so it will be um, quite fun. We'll do our best we can with that theme. Um, and we will have this year more vendors um, on hand than we had last year. So we hope this year will be more well attended than it was last year. But uh, if you are available um, to come by during that time frame, please do. Um, we would love to have you. And Blue Cross Blue Shield will be on site as well. So um, this is our first year with a different health care provider, so we look forward to that. So. Um, May 23rd, Conference Center, and that's all I have. Ms. Alston, it occurs to me that events like this are probably a big part of the reason why Douglasville was named healthiest employer. I would venture to say so as well. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to keep that momentum going. So um, we're doing our numbers with health and wellness and events are, they're just growing every time we have something. So uh, we're grateful for that. So we hope to see everyone out and we'll have prizes and we are still incentivizing the screenings this year. So if they um, come and get the screening and they do the health assessment, they'll we'll still be uh, incentivizing it as well. So, and employees look forward to that. That's how we get them out. So, so that's all I have. Very good. Is there any other business to come before council tonight? Not seeing any, this meeting is adjourned.